Did you ever fail when you started your business? Well, I have never failed. You have never failed? No way. From the time when I started, every year is better than the previous year. If you have never failed, then what did you do different? Because so many people fail while doing their businesses. What did you do different? So, most of the people, they have an idea. But at the end of the day, they do hesitate, saying, ah, can this happen? So the moment those type of ideas come in your mind, then they weaken you. At the end of the day, you fail on what you're doing. But if people have come up with a network, you can speak to Ghana right now. Hmm. There is nothing there. But you can communicate and know whom you are speaking to by the weight. And the other people have made a plane to fly. Those are difficult things to do, but they have managed them. So if other people have managed them, what difference does it make with us? Listen, I'm in Africa to celebrate African excellence. And each and every African that I know or I meet along my journey needs to be celebrated. But out of the stories that I've been telling and showing you guys, this story will probably be one of my best stories ever. And anytime I want to tell you best stories like this, I want to follow up with the best song in the whole world. Listen, DJ, give me that song. From Cape Town to Cairo, Angola to Malawi, what am I? Shows Africa. I'm in Africa to celebrate every single African. And anytime I tell stories like this, I don't just get inspired, I feel motivated. And listen, these are the stories that makes me believe in the dreams of Kwame Nkrumah that a black man is capable of managing his own affairs. Do you believe in that statement? Yes, I do. Africa to the world. I just don't want to celebrate this legend all by myself. I want you to help me celebrate him by liking this video. If you like this video, it proves to me that you also believe that it's possible to make it in Africa. Why do I say that this is one of my best stories ever? This is one man born in the village, left to the city, made it in life, came back to the village and decided to transform his own village. Now, they call it the Singapore of Africa. Well, Singapore is a, uh, a small area which has developed in such a way that they have everything that they need. So the same concept which they have in Singapore, uh, that's uh, what we want to use here, that we have to bring all the needs to the people in this area. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, welcome to Doha. Believe me or not, it doesn't matter where you're born. If you are born to be great, you will be great no matter what. Because this legend who is transforming his own village once went to school without shoes. What was the kilometers to school? 18 kilometers. You walk? Walk. Without shoes? No shoes. This same person dropped out of school. Is it because your father couldn't pay the fees? Well, what had happened was uh, when I did my business mm. of exchange, I made 125 watts. So because I made 125 kwaja, mm -hmm. then when I went back to school, I started inquiring how much our teacher was getting a month. So I was told that he was getting less than what I had made. I went to the teacher and presented my books and other school properties, <laughs> saying I'm leaving school because I want to become rich. <laughs> And why do I call him a legend? For him to build an agricultural school in his own village to empower families is everything. It only takes a visionary leader to come up with something like this. Look at the name of the school. School of Agriculture for Family Independence. Kwame Nkrumah will say, 
independence now, self-reliant now. And that is the main goal of this school. See, for him to build a whole agriculture school to empower families is everything. And this school is for free. And wh what about the tuition? Well, what we do here, because uh, we have people who have been helping the school with some funds. Then he, he comes in, we send trucks to collect the, his family and the goods with this school. So when he comes here, we, give, we provide a home with electricity and water. We provide the fertilizer, seeds, whatever. Then he, he spends the whole year here. By the end of the year, after harvest, then he's asking just to, to leave two bags of maize as a t-shirt here. Okay. This legend is an agriculturalist. He believes in agriculture. Well, our economy is a agro-based economy. So being an agro-based economy, then I have to take an important role to that area in order to boost the production. Uh, we are hearing that the, well, most, most parts of the country, they are learning short of food. So because they are learning short of food, it means somebody who can produce enough food, then he, he can make big money and survive on that. So that's why I'm more of agriculture, in order to help, at least support the world with the food. And one of his attributes that I believe that we all need to know is him being a philanthropist. I mean, his philanthropy work is on another level. He built a hospital for his community and he never makes a dollar out of it. Yeah, I have also a hospital. Mm. Yeah, the hospital has been running since 2003. I have not even managed to get a single cent from it. What do you mean? Well, I built the hospital. People get services. All the money which they get is paid to doctors, it's paid for medicines. And sometimes uh, people, well, well wish us uh, the help one way or the other. But uh, despite I build it with my own money, money and everything, I have never gone to collect even a single cent since I built it. This whole village never had internet, but he made it possible. It took him 10 years to build his own man-made lake, but he has never cruised on it because for him, he was doing it for the community. You know that this is my first time to be on this boat? What do you mean? <laughs> the first time? That's my first time. Maybe I was waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why he's building a hotel next to the lake that it took him 10 years to build will blow your mind away. Well, the idea is uh, we have people with money in town and the other areas of the world. But how can they bring their money here? So that's why I said I think I have to put up something which should be very attractive so that when people come with money, our local people now can manage to sell their oranges their bananas, their potatoes, whatever they produce. Then by the time these people will be leaving this area back to their village, at least a small amount of money, now our people will get it. What an incredible human being. Listen, do me a favor because I feel like the world needs to hear from this man. Or I feel like Africans across the globe needs to hear about this man. Can you please share this video? Like this video because if this video don't get 30,000 likes, no more new video. Because I feel like Mr. Napoleon Zombe or maybe Dr. Professor Napoleon Zombe needs to be celebrated by Africans. And that's why I'm here. How, how do you feel anytime you see what you've done 
in the village where you are born? Well, I'm not yet satisfied because the people uh, they are still living below average in their earnings. So I will be very happy to see people earning enough money that they can send their children to good schools. They can have enough food in their homes and uh, they can go to better hospitals. I think, I think that would make me happy. But as of now, I feel I have done nothing. For now, you feel like you've done nothing? Yeah. The first house was here. That's where the first house was. So basically, you were born here? Yeah, that's where I come from. Here? Yeah, I come from here. If this is where you were born? Yeah, well, that's the place. Well, what kind of house was built in here? Ah, uh, well, the first house was made from grass. Poles, then surrounded by grass. The roof, grass. So even the rats would just go through it wherever they would need to go through it. <laughs> that was the first house. Wow. So after that one, then we had to put some dirt so that the, now the wind and the, the rats should not just be going anywhere. So from there, now that's when now we came up with that building. Knowing that you come from here, yeah. and what you've been able to achieve yeah. on Earth, yeah. what is that one quote that comes into your mind? Well, now, you know, everything has its own origin. So this is where I come from. Then after doing everything that I'm doing, I started thinking, what can I bring back home? and improve the area. So that's when I came up with uh, so many ideas of developing this place. So the first thing was uh, to bring the School of Agriculture. Where people should get trained to modern skills of agriculture so that they can improve their livelihood. So I did that. So after doing that, then I said, OK. But uh, still, we need money. So how can we bring money here? Then I said, we have rich people all over who may be interested to come and uh, spend their money somewhere privately. And if I can come up with uh, something tangible, well-managed and beautiful. I think people would like to spend their money somewhere like that. So that's when I started building the dam. So I started building the dam that was in 2002. So after 2002, I had to break for some time. Then I came back to continue building the dam. So I've been building the dam for almost 10 years. So after that, then I said, well, here's the dam. But people will come, they will need to eat. People will come, they need to spend a night here. So what, is, what next? Then that's when I came up with an, an idea of building a hotel. So in 2019, that's when I started building the hotel. So now the hotel is done. Now I am extending some other buildings. Mm -hmm. Then when I'm done with those buildings, now I'm planning to come up with a big conference center. Uh, after a big conference center, then we have to have the small ones around 
so that even international conferences one day they should come and, host and get hosted here in my village. Since it's all started from here, yeah. I want to know mm -hmm. how it's all started mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Well, from the time you were born, I was born, we had the challenges in terms of finances. So the hunger was not a question. It was the, our routine hmm. that we used to have it almost every year. So we had to move from here, going to different parts of the district to ask for food to different places and leave it to us. Then uh, I get bored saying, well, we are humans. What has made the other people to be successful as they are? So I started learning business here and there. While I was doing that, I was also going to school. Then uh, it happened that uh, I was selected for secondary education. By then, I had no fees. Then my father's sister said, no, we cannot let this guy stay here. I will provide a cow for fees. Hmm. So a cow was sold, then I went to school. So while I was at school, I started thinking, what will happen to my next grade? Mm, who's going to pay for it? Who is going to pay for it? Is my father's sister going to give me another car? And I said, well, I need to find a solution for this. So because I wanted to find a solution, then I said, okay, father, can you please borrow 25 kwacha? By then, 25 kwacha was equivalent to $25. So I said, can you borrow 25 kwacha? So he bought 25 kwacha, then sent it to school. Then he, while I was still learning, I went to a shop where they were making sales, which women use for their flour. My mother used to borrow a sale from somewhere. So I said, well, in my village, we have a challenge of these things. So if I can buy them and bring them home and start battling with maize, which our people have, I think it would be a good business for me. Wait, how old were you that time? Uh, by then I was uh, something around uh, 21. And you were 21 and you were going to... Uh, oh, um, um, I said 20. That's when I started thinking about that. So when I came here and he did that small business, then he, that's when I went back to school to drop school, which I dropped it when I was 21 years. You dropped from school. Is it because your father couldn't pay the fees? Well, what had happened was the, when he, I did my business mm. of exchange. I made 125 kwacha. So because I made 125 kwacha, mm -hmm. then when I went back to school, I started inquiring how much our teacher was getting a month. So I was told that he was getting less than what I had made, which was, he was making 115 kwacha. Yet I had made 125 within the same month. So I said, well, now I'm in Form 2 or Grade 9. So because I'm in Grade 9, then I will need to take three years to complete my secondary education. So after three years, I will need to go to university for another four years. Yes. Why should I spend all that time <laughs> yeah. just to get 150 <laughs> kwacha, yet I can manage to get more than that within the same frame time. So I dropped school. 
I went to the teacher and presented my books and other school properties saying I'm leaving school because I want to become rich. <laughs> so <laughs> everyone said, wow, you are the poorest in this school. So Wait, wait. Everyone was saying you are the poorest. Mm -hmm. How was the poverty like for you? How, how was it? Well, how, how, how poor were you that time? Yeah, I, I was so poor that I could not even manage to buy good school uniform. Instead, I had to find a second hand a trousers for school uniform and a second hand shirt for school uniform because uh, we could not afford to buy new. Were you going to school with shoes? Yeah, well, yeah, that's uh, the time when I started uh, putting on the shoes. Yeah, but... Uh, well, I don't understand. The shoes? When did you start wearing shoes? By the time when I was selected for secondary education. That's like 20 years of your life yeah. without wearing shoes? Without wearing shoes. Uh, we could not manage. Like, and uh, when I, come, I came back from school, mm. I had just uh, two short trousers and uh, two shirts. That's what I had. So I had to be exchanging those shirts. I had no time to waste. I had no time even to wash my clothing. Every day I was working until I managed the uh, to do what I was doing. Now we go back. You said you wanted to be rich? Yeah. You send your books to the teacher that you are no longer... We're going to continue. Going to continue. Yeah. And then people were telling you that you are the poorest? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, by the time I was you saying I want to become rich, they, they were saying, uh, you know, you are the poorest in the school. So how are you going to become rich? I said, well, where there's a will, there's a way. So after that, then even my father he was very disappointed. Most of the guys were very disappointed because the second school, which I was, was the best in the country by then. So they said, why can you leave the second school? Being the government second school, which has everything. I said, well, I need to become this, so there's no time to waste. Let me go and do what I think is right for me. So I came back. So after I came back, then I had asked the father if he could give me his cow, because what I had used was his sister's cow, but he had some cows, so he gave me his cow. I sold the cow at the 77 quarter. So I gave back to him one quarter and he made it with the 76 quarter. Then I bought salt. I started exchanging salt with groundnuts or what other people call peanuts. After six months of hard working, then I made 770 kwacha from 76 kwacha. By then, a bag of fertilizer was five kwacha, and a packet of seed was four kwacha. So I bought 32 bags of fertilizer and 16 packets of maize seed. Then I had asked my father and the family to join me to grow maize. I went to another district to get some four guys on a contract. That if they help me, this is how much I'll give them. So we worked. Finally, we had harvested 63 farm cuts of maize. After sharing some of it, it came up with the 300 bucks. So we sold. Then we ended up making some good money. Then now I said, 
what next? I think What's now next? we have to start growing tobacco. By then, tobacco, more especially barley tobacco, was a special crop that nobody was allowed to grow it without the licenses. So I said, well, as long as I know that the tobacco is a good crop, then I will try to grow it. So everybody in the area discouraged me that if I grow, if I grew tobacco by then, then I would be arrested. And I said, well, why is the balloon and the other guys growing tobacco? They said they have licenses. I said, how can a poor man like me get a license? It is a license a block to prevent me to go into business. Let me just study it. So I grew my tobacco. Finally, I had harvested 29 bells. So a friend of mine yeah. did the favor. He sold for me. Then end result was I got 1,700 kwacha. By then it was enough to buy even a second-hand car. So I said, well, now I have to use this money to make the licenses which are required. <laughs> so you started growing yeah. before you got your license? Well, I think uh, what the governments are doing yeah. all over, they are buying the poor not to be successful. Because what they, did, that what they do is, you are a young man, you want to start a business. So they impose on you that you have to have a license, you have to lease your land, visibility study, you have to have environmental assessment, you have to have all sorts of things. So you are just starting, you, don't have you have nothing. What is the meaning of giving all these to you? It means they don't want young people to develop. But if they could say, you are a young man, you want to start business, we are giving you five years to practice this. After five years, we will just register you for free and monitor you for five years. So after five years, then we will require you to do ABCD then the young men would be successful. But these measures have been put in place by the colonialists, the, the people who had colonized our uh, countries to block us to be successful. So that's why if you want to start any business, they give you a lot of things to get done. So that whatever you have should just be spent on those procedures, then you are done you fail. So I think if Africa is to grow, then they have to waive these things for somebody in the beginning. So it means when you got your first money, yeah. that's when you went for the, your friend help you get a license. Yeah, well, first I did what I did. After doing that, then somebody helped me to sell whatever he produced in using his license. Mm. Mm. So after I got the money, now I had enough strength that I could meet all the necessary measures for the government. So that's what had made me successful. But if I could say, okay, I have managed to get 770 kwacha, then to get somebody to do survey for my farm, it could cost me more than that. And for somebody uh, to approve whatever I wanted to approve, I had to move from this office, that office, that office. Mm. It could take me all the money and leave nothing for me to grow my business. So these barriers were, are there deliberately so that they could control the growth of African businesses. But the African leaders, they don't have an eye to see why these things come into practice. 
you got your own license. Yeah. You had your own tobacco farm. Yeah. What happened next from there? Yes, yeah, now from there, then my business started flourishing. Yeah, first year I had of my license, I had 163 bales of tobacco. Mm. So from there, 200. From 200, 500 bales. From 500, 600. 600, 1,000 bales of tobacco. Then I started buying trucks. So after buying so many trucks, now I started thinking, what has made Europe to be more successful than Africa? Then now I had to set aside a certain amount of money to fly myself from Africa to Europe. Was it your first time? It was my first time to <laughs> go to Europe. Okay. So there in Europe I spent almost 45 days just to see what those guys are doing. Then I discovered that they are very successful because they add value to whatever they produce before they sell. So I said, well, we have forests in Malawi. We have a lot of uh, low material in Malawi. Why can't I buy machineries? <laughs>